Hi everyone and welcome back to our ability system tutorial series. In this episode we're going to finish off our debuff uh, ability and part of that will involve setting up the UI for our targets that we have selected. So let's get started with showing off our, how we do that with the widgets. So first of all we need to go into our UI and make a new folder and we'll call this the debuff UI and we'll open this up. So we need to do a couple of things. First of all, we need to set up the debuff icon and then we also need to set up the panel for the um, target that we've got currently selected. So I'm going to go add new user interface widget blueprint and go debuff icon underscore UI. Now the debuff icon is going to be again pretty much identical to the buff icon. So if I go and find my buff icon and open up as well, I can use that as a template and copy that over. Okay, so what actually might be quicker is actually just duplicating it. So let's go and duplicate that. So I've duplicated that there, and then I'm just going to delete this old one here. And I'm just going to drag that into my debuff UI folder. Cool. Okay. So this thing, as I said, it's pretty much identical. So I'm just going to change a few names here so I know it's what one I'm working with. So that's going to be called debuff image. And it's going to be debuff timer. And I just want to go in and make sure the graph is all accurate as well. Nothing weird going on here. Again, I might change here the, the, uh, the language being used so it doesn't get confusing. So that's debuff ability, debuff lifespan, and I just want to go in and make sure these are all okay. So debuff ability, we want to change the variable type to ability debuff. Uh, click change variable type. That'll break a few things. We're just going to go around and fix them. So rather than do that, we're going to go there. And rather than buff lifespan, we need to get the debuff lifespan and after that we want to go and do this one ah we need to set up the buff removed so let's go and do that so an ability ability debuff go event dispatches uh yep event dispatches go debuff removed Compile and we're just going to bind event to debuff removed. So we're just going around just fixing the things so they match up. So debuff is there. Uh, this one we want to change to this one, and that looks like it may be it. Hit compile and we should be golden. Excellent. Okay, so as I said, it's pretty much identical. Okay, the only thing you're doing is changing from buff to debuff. That's all. Okay, so we can now close this and close that one as well. And what we're going to do is create a target UI as well. So let's create the target UI. So the target UI, open this up. Uh, this is going to be the health bar, mana bar of the a name of the target. So I'm just going to clear the cast panel because we don't need absolute positioning. Instead, we're going to do uh, a panel. We're going to do a border. It's be easier if we just search for it. And that border is going to have the background of our grey. And we need a size box in there. And the size box, we're going to do a width override of, let's say, 300. And a height override of 100. We'll see how that looks. So inside the size box, we're then going to put in a vertical box. And the vertical box is going to store things, its contents vertically, stack them on top of each other. So we want a few things. We want some text. And that'd be the name of the target. We all want, and then want two progress bars. 
And these two refer to health and manner. So I'm going to go text block. And let's change first of all full screen to desired. So we can see what we're working with. The text block we're going to put and we'll actually we'll change that later on. We'll do the bars first. So the bars we're going to change the size to fill and fill. And fill makes it means they'll share the space evenly if we don't change this value. And so, so I can see what I'm working with. I'm going to change the per, uh, percent, default percent here to these values. So the first one here, I'm going to rename to target health bar and change the color of that to our green uh, our red soy and this one we're going to change the color to our we'll leave it as blue I think and just change the name of it to uh, target manner bar now the name I'm going to change the font to be a little bit smaller so I'm going to change it to 18 probably there we are and I'm just going to add some padding to it and do a padding of three. How's that looking? A bit more, I think, maybe, maybe five. That looks a bit better. Okay, so there's our target panel. Now what we're going to do for the debuffs is show them on top of our panel here. Actually, no, we'll do it below. Okay, we'll do it below the panel here. So on the target, we're going to add a wrap box to the bottom of this. So what I want to do is not actually make it in part of the panel, but make it separate so it hangs below it. So to do that, I need to wrap my border here with a vertical box. And inside that vertical box, I'm going to put in a wrap box. And we've used wrap boxes before. They simply take the contents of them and show them in a row and when we reach the end of the row it'll go to another uh, another row and so on and so forth and uh, this wrap box just so i can see and a preview of how it's going to look i'm just going to drag a couple debuff icons in and duplicate those across so you can see what it's looking like okay um the reason why it's freaking out is because this size box here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this size, uh, replace the size box with the child, like so, and then put a size box um, above the vertical box. So wrap with size box, and then change its width to a desired of 300. There we are. So the wrap box you can see displaying the debuff icons, like so. Okay. Uh, next, what we're going to do is actually put a size box around the vertical box. No, uh, around the border. Because I want to pad these out a bit. So wrap, wrap with size box. And we'll do a height override of that to uh, 100 to get that effect. There we are. Okay, so now we've got these debuff icons showing here. And what I'm going to do on the wrap box is select it and I'll change the inner slot padding here to three and three. And it gives a little bit of padding along that. I'm also going to separate the wrap box from the panel a little bit. So I'm going to go to the top padding and change the top here to 10. You get it sort of hanging a bit more, which we want. And hit compile and go to the graph. Now the graph is going to have a mostly just main thing is a variable. And that's going to be called the target. And the target is a variable type of the target parent. Hit compile. So the target parent is going to come from our um, new target uh, when we select it on the controller. So if you remember, if I go back to it and show you, on our controller, we're calling target changed. So not only are we going to make all the other all the other possible targets turn off their target indicators, but we're also going to tell the UI to update which target it should be looking at. So on here, we're going to go to our target UI, and on the event construct, we're going to get the player controller and cast that to my controller. 
we're then going to come out of there and bind event to target changed. We're also going to store my controller as a variable. So come out there and promote a variable and call it a uh, controller. Tidy up. There we go. So the event we're going to bind to this is going to be a custom event. And we call it update target UI. And this thing is going to update which target we're looking at. So all we're going to do here is going to drag the target from our variable out and choose set. And we're going to drag the controller object uh, variable out and choose get. And from the controller, we're going to get current target. And that's going to plug into the target like so. Hit compile. So with that done, we can now tell it to update what features we want to update. So we've got the health, uh, the name, health bar, and manner. So let's do the name first and foremost. So the target is going to have a name on it. So we need to go onto our target parent and give it a name. So we're going to go target name. And that's going to be a text value. And hit compile. And target name by default is uh, def underscore target I'm going to go back to my target UI I can now from this set target I can drag out and get target name I can now apply that to our text field so I'm going to click on my text field whilst I'm here I'm going to just, just delete all these data icons we don't need this Going to click on this text field and we're going to change the name of it here to target name text and tick the is variable box. I'm going to go to the graph and on here we're going to get and set, or sorry, drag the target name text out, choose get and set text. Now we can change the text inside that widget to match our target name. Okay, so we also need health and mana. So again, back to the target parent, we can give it some uh, health. And that's going to be a float. And uh, we're going to go mana. And that's what's going to be a float. And these are going to be normalized values. So I'm actually going to change the name of this one to health normalized. And go mana underscore normalized and drag compile okay so with those I want to go back to my target UI and we're going to drag target health bar out and set percent and the percent is going to come from our target so drag target out get health And again, exactly the same for the mana bar. Like so. Okay. I'm going to go back to my target parent and just change the default of this to one and one and hit compile. Back in the target UI, uh, this update target UI has now been assigned to whenever we click on a target. Okay, so what we're also going to do is make it so this target, this thing is only visible if we've got a current target selected. Okay, so before we tell update target or target changed, update target UI, we want to check that my controller, the current target, is valid. So right click on the target and convert to valid data to get. So this will only happen if it's valid. If it is not valid, we're going to tell this whole thing to go invisible. So set visibility to hidden. If it's not, then at the end of here, 
we're going to set visibility to visible. So if we lose the target, this thing will go and disappear. If we have selected a target, we're not only telling it to update the UI uh, details, but also tell it to change the visibility here. Make sure it's visible. OK. Uh, we hit save. And what we're also going to do is do a timer to update this. Actually, no, we won't do, we won't do a timer. We'll do another thing later on. We'll come back to that. So hit save and we'll close this. So the last thing we need to do is add this to the UI. So go to your HUD UI. And we're going to add this to the screen. So let's find the target UI. And I'm going to just drag it to the top left there. And set the position here to 50 and 50. And hit compile. So by default, this thing will be hidden. So let's change it to hidden. And hit compile. Now let's test this out. So you can see there it's changed which target I'm looking at and told it to show itself. So demonstrate the name changing. If I go into one of these and um, let's actually let's go into and let's edit and make the name editable. And we'll call this one Bob. If I play the game, this one would be Def Pet Target, and this one would be Bob. OK. So the UI there is now updating to match that. What we want to do next time is add the debuff icon. I was hoping to do it in this episode, but I feel like we're going to run out of time. So we'll end it there, and in the next episode, we'll work on showing the debuff icon on that target UI. Thanks very much for watching. If you want to watch that next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash RyanLaley, where a donation of $1 will get access to that video, plus many, many others. Big shout out and thank you to all my patrons and my YouTube members for their continued support. We wouldn't be this without you guys, so thank you, thank you so much. If you like what I do, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.